Um, I'm just going to go over question seven quickly. So for this one, um, it's similar to question six where we're using um, a bit of the random method, but we also want to be creating an interactive drawing. Um, so we want to display some circles interactively and we've got a few dot points of things that we want our program to do, which is really helpful because um, we can just take them one step at a time, address one dot point at a time, um, and we can tick things off as we go. So the first thing we want is that we should have a window size of 256 by 256 and the background colour is a light orange. So that's quite straightforward. We want 256, 256. Hopefully we all know how to do that. My background, I want to be a light orange. So I'm going to go to, oops, not terminal, processing. Um, I want to go to the color picker. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, color selector, maybe. Oops, what's going on? Color selector. Okay, so I want light orange. I think that's about right. Um, so we've got our red is 252. Green is 191. Blue is 99. So we can test that to make sure it's working. Great. Okay. Um, so the first part done. It's good. We can tick that first one off. Um, so when the user clicks a mouse button at a particular point, the program should display a circle centered on that point. Um, so now we're going to have to include our um, initial functions here, like our set up and draw um, and we want to remember as well I mentioned this in the class when we are dealing with events like mouse pressed or key pressed we also want to have the draw function even if it's empty um, because that draw function is looping around and it's searching for those um, events like mouse press to happen so if we didn't have draw processing isn't going to register that these events have happened um, so what do we want to do again? When the mouse button is pressed at a particular point, the program should display a circle centered on that point. So when the mouse is pressed, we want to draw an ellipse centered at that point, so where we click on the screen. So we had a look as well at mouse X, mouse Y, um, which are the coordinates of our cursor on the screen. So we want our X coordinate to be mouse X, we want our Y coordinate to be mouse Y um, and it doesn't give us the size of the circle yet so I'm just going to go 20-20 um, for now and if we need to change that we can change that. So we want to double check this works as we go and that looks like it's working quite fine. Okay so second one is good. The circle should stay there when the user clicks again. Okay, it already does that, so we're fine. Um, the width and height of the circle should be the Y coordinate of the point at which the mouse was clicked. Okay, so we're changing these variables here and we're changing it to the Y coordinate, which is this mouse Y. So, depending on where we click on the screen, so if we click higher up the screen um, on our Y axis here, it's going to be a smaller value, so our circle will be really small. And as we go down the y-axis, our mouse y value increases because um, we're going down. So our circle will get bigger because we've set our width and height to that value. Um, so that's done. And the last part is every circle should be filled with an RGB color. Okay, so I'll set the fill there. Um, the red component is the x-coordinate of the point at which the mouse was clicked. Um, so if we've got RGB, our red is the x-coordinate, so we'll go mouse x. Uh, the green component is the y-coordinate, so green would be mouse y. Um, and the blue component is 0. Great, so um, 
this one's quite straightforward. It's really good that it's set out in steps, so hopefully you didn't have too many issues with that. Um, so you should get something like this, where depending where you click on the screen, you'll get a different coloured and sized ellipse. And yeah, we're finished.